Hey, welcome back. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how you can create a gameplay effect that applies its effects based on attributes like armor or strength. Obviously, in this example, I'm just going to show you how you could calculate the amount of damage you do to a target, for example, but you can obviously kind of abstract that to other types of gameplay effects and ways in which you can use attributes to calculate the, you know, the the magnitude of your gameplay effects. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so I started off by creating a very simple attribute set. It just has health, strength, and armor. Um, the gameplay ability system is already set up on this project. And the only other thing I really did was um, basically set this up so it prints the health every tick. And every time I press the H key, I'm going to apply this damage effect to myself. And this damage effect is super simple. Like I showed in my um, gameplay effect tutorial video, it just reduces your health attribute by 50. What we wanted to do is calculate how much damage it should do based on the source's strength and the target's armor. So to do that, we need to create a um, custom calculation class. And as you can see by the tooltip here, basically it's a class that runs uh, when the gameplay effect executes and it is in charge of basically like modifying um, modifying your attributes in some way. And with that, let's create our calculation class. It's going to be a C++ class. Unfortunately, they don't have an option for blueprints, but that's all right. So it's going to be gameplay effect calculation. I think it's execution calculation. That's important. And just call this like damage execution and do that and in our header file we need to add a constructor and this override function i'll get into it in a second okay so basically this function is what gets called whenever we want to apply the effect or like do damage or anything like that. So for example, if it's like a poison damage over time effect, this execute will get called like each tick. But if it's an instant effect, then it'll just get called once. Um, either way, that this, this function is where like the bulk of everything happens. That's where you do the calculations, that sort of thing. But as we mentioned, that for this specific example, we want to calculate how much damage to do based on um, the target's armor and the source's strength. For our calculation class to capture this information, we need to do a couple of things in our um, implementation file. First, we need to create a structure to hold all of our captured defs. Um, these captured defs are essentially um, definitions for how to capture attributes from our source and targets. So as you can see here, we declare all of the um, different art attributes that we're interested in. All right, so we want armor, strength, and health. And then in the constructor, we want to actually call this macro. Uh, we indicate which attribute set, which attribute, whether it's a source or a target that we're reading this attribute from. And finally, whether or not it is a snapshot. A snapshot is basically a copy of the attribute's current value. Now, these are all attributes that we don't really need snapshots for but you might want snapshots for things that you change right before we do this effect and might get overwritten by the end of it by some other effects something like maybe like damage or magnitude that sort of thing uh, but in this case yeah we'll just have all these set to false if you scroll down a little bit we'll come to this helper function this will just help us um, retrieve our um, attribute captures and finally, if we go to our constructor here, we add all of these um, captured defs to our list of relevant attributes to capture. This is very important because, um, you know, here's where we define how we want to capture the data. And then here's where we actually tell this specific class to actually capture this information for us. Okay, so now that we are capturing all of the information we need, we can move on to the execute function. Now this first part is pretty much just boilerplate. Um, so if it seems a little daunting, don't worry. This is practically you just copy and paste. Um, this part is just getting 
the ability system component and actors for our source and target. Um, this portion here gets information about our gameplay effect. And finally, we get um, basically the parameters that were passed to our effect. And we'll see how those work in a little bit. But now that we're done with all the boy plate, we can get into the interesting stuff. In this first part, we're going to get how much damage to apply. And we're going to get this from an actual uh, gameplay tag, sort of. When you apply gameplay effects, you can apply it with a certain magnitude. So that's how we're going to apply the damage. And this is how we read it. So as you can see, we call this function get set by color magnitude and then request this gameplay tag data dot damage. And here's how we actually get the, uh, the damage that we assign through like the magnitude um, portion of it. And um, we're going to do a max between that and zero because it might not exist or something like that. And yeah, so this just basically gets the base damage of this effect. Unlike damage, armor and strength are much more straightforward because if you recall, we made this helper function here to get the captured attributes. So this function will basically just try to read that information and assign the, you know, the, the value from our attributes to this variable armor and this variable strength. And finally, we just calculate how much damage to do. Obviously, this, this can be whatever formula you like. This is just one I came up with for the purposes of this video. But finally, we have to call this function add output modifier. And this is what basically tells the effect how it should modify the attribute set. And here's where we tell it to modify the health by adding a negative value equal to the damage done, which is like what we calculated, calculated the total damage should be. And that should sound familiar because that's basically what we were doing with the gameplay effect before, right? We're, we're doing a, uh, an add operator with a negative magnitude. So it's, it's a similar thing, but the only difference being we actually calculated how much damage to apply. All right, with our calculation class done, we could remove the old modifier that we had because that was kind of like a hard-coded value. And we can add to our executions list the calculation class we made and compile, save, and yeah, it should work. So now I press play, I hit H, and you can see it did damage. Now, yours might not work, uh, well, it definitely won't work, actually, because you have to actually state how much damage to do. So I added this bit of code here. Um, notice how I assign a tag to the gameplay effect um, spec, and I assign it in magnitude as well. So notice the data tag is data.damage, and that matches this one right here. So whatever value I signed here is what gets read here. So see if I do 20 damage, play, and see it's doing 20 damage. All right, so that is how you assign how much damage to do, and the rest of the values get read from the attribute sets. So as a quick example, I can actually modify, for example, how much strength I have. So say I want to do triple damage and I'm going to reduce my armor to zero. And so now I should receive 60 damage and there it is. But now if I increase my armor to 50, it should be 30 damage because it's 50% damage reduction. And there it is. Now, another option you have for setting the damage, instead of doing it this way, you could just make a new attribute in your attribute set. For like damage, you could, it could be called like weapon damage, just like basic damage, whatever you want. So I'll just do this for now. Okay, and then in your damage execution, instead of reading it this way, you could do something like this. Oh, oh wait. Base damage equals zero. Oh, I can't type right now. Okay, then just like in the other things, you would try to read the damage from our attribute set. And then finally add 
add the uh, whatever you assign with like the tags as maybe some sort of like optional thing you could do. Um, and of course, it's gonna like bug us about um, this not being defined, the uh, damage def, and that's because you have to go up here, add it to like all the other ones we had. So we also need damage from the source. And cool. So now with all that, let's try rebuilding. Okay, so now if we go back, remove this. Actually, we probably don't even need any of this. We could just do apply gameplay effect to self. And I'll just pass in damage that. Go to our damage effect. And we can add a new modifier. To modify the damage attribute we just made, we'll make it override because we don't want it to keep adding. And let's make it, I don't know, like 18. So you know it's it's like a unique number. Let's go ahead and play. I'll hit H and you can see it is working. All right, well, that's all I had for you on gameplay effect calculations. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Huge shout out to Captain Von Vec for encouraging me to create a Patreon. I actually wasn't going to make one until maybe when my channel was a little bigger, but he asked for the link, so I made one. Since I just made this Patreon, it's pretty bare bones, but I definitely want to flesh it out more going forward. I will say that developers will have access to the full source code of all my videos going forward, and pretty soon I'm going to make a Discord server where we can all communicate with each other, and you can reach out if you have any questions. So yeah, if any of that sounds interesting to you, or if you just want to support me on Patreon, um, yeah, feel free. I'd really appreciate it. And with that, thanks for watching.